Having an age gap between the oldest and youngest members of a K-pop group is a common occurrence. It's also not uncommon for an idol to debut at the age of 20 or older, but in the case of Baby Vox member Lee Guy, she would debut at the age of 20 more than once. Welcome to Weekly Weird K-Pop. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Everything about I don't even rap. So what is this? K-pop. In 1998, first-generation group Baby Vox was in dire straits after the commercial and critical failure of their debut album. Internal conflicts also led to the departure and removal of several of the group's original members. Seeing this as an opportunity to revamp the group, Baby Vox's company, DR Music, would change the group's edgy girl crush concept that is commonplace today to a sugary sweet one that was the norm and more widely accepted at the time. With this change also came the inclusion of two new members, one of which was singer Lee Guy. Guy was originally supposed to debut with Baby Vox in 1997, but had to withdraw due to an injury. Officially introduced to the public during promotions of Baby Vox's second album title track, Yeah Yeah Yeah. This was the group's first brush with success as the song charted at number 7 on the Korean pop charts. Despite the success, fans couldn't help but notice something a bit odd about Baby Vox's latest edition. Lee Guy always seemed to be wearing sunglasses in the group's MVs and interviews. Little by little, she would begin taking off her sunglasses during the second half of promotions for Ya 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 and would instead opt for wearing a beanie during activities for Baby Vox's follow-up single, Change. It was at this point that many noticed that Guy appeared much older than the other members of Baby Vox who were 17 to 18 years of age, and at this time Guy was reportedly 20 years old. Due to her appearance, the public and fans alike began referring to her as Auntie. Looks aside, many also noticed that during Baby Vox's performance, she had trouble keeping up with choreography and would make frequent mistakes. Later that year, Baby Vox appeared on broadcast with a popular teenage soccer player who had a large fan base, many of whom thought Lee Guy's interactions with the athlete were flirty and inappropriate given their age difference, prompting some to look further into the singer's background. Shortly after, a fan that had been suspicious since Guy's debut in Baby Vox raised the question of her true age, revealing on an early internet forum that she heavily resembled a member of an 80s girl group. This prompted a television station to dedicate an entire program to discovering the truth, at the end of which they revealed that Lee Guy had actually been born in 1968, making her 30 years old, not 20. This woman was the Steve Buscemi of K-pop. How do you do, fellow kids? What? So let's rewind a bit. How did a 30-year-old woman debut in a group with 17-year-olds? Well, it starts all the way back in 1987 with the girl group Setere. Going by her birth name, Lee Hee Jung, the then 19-year-old debuted as part of the J-pop inspired trio. The group performed popular Japanese songs with the lyrics changed to English due to Korean sentiment and a ban on Japanese culture at the time. The trio will release their first original song, I Love You, in 1988, followed by two full albums. Setare saw mild success and would even perform in Japan several times. However, the group disbanded in 1989 after the exit of one of its members. In 1991, the two remaining members of Setare would re-debut under the name Tam Tam. Not only would the group receive a name change, but Lee Hee Jung would begin using the name Lee Jisoo. The duo had a much more mature concept than their previous group, but failed to make much of an impact. 
Tam Tam only released one album with member Yuna leaving shortly thereafter, and the group was effectively disbanded. Not one to stay inactive for long, with the help of then underground producer Yoon Jung Jung, I probably butchered that, Hee Jung would re re debut, still using the name Lee Ji So as a soloist in 1993. This would also be her first brush with fabricating her age, however, only slightly with her profile stating she was born on February 19, 1969, instead of her actual birth date of July 19, 1968. She would release two unsuccessful albums as a solo artist before going radio silent until her re-re-re-debut as a member of Baby Box under the new name Lee Guy in 1998. Four times! This woman debuted four times! I mean, you gotta respect the hustle. In 1999, following the publication of Lee Guy's True Age, representatives from DR Music held a press conference alongside Guy, during which she confirmed that she had indeed been born in 1968, not 1978 as she had previously stated. Guy would further go on to explain that she had lied about her age because she needed to debut to pay for her father's medical treatments. Following this, DR Music would announce Lee Guy's removal from Baby Box. After auditioning several potential singers, she would eventually be replaced by 15-year-old Yoon Eun Hae. Eun Hae would initially receive some hate during her debut with Baby Vox from fans who still supported and missed Lee Guy. The thing I find interesting is that throughout all of this, DR music acted as if they had been duped as well and that they had no idea of Guy's real age. That's suspicious. That's weird. But if you recall, earlier in this video I mentioned a then underground producer that helped Lee Guy debut as a solo artist back in 1993. Well, that same producer would go on to found DR Music in 1997, with Lee Guy originally planned to debut with Baby Vox that same year. After her departure from the group, Guy would disappear from the music industry. As of the recording of this video, she would be 52 years old. Wow, honestly, I have nothing but respect for this woman. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah, she lied about her age. Yes, she changed her name several times. Yes, she debuted multiple times over the span of a decade. Where was I going with this again? I find it very hard to believe that DR Music didn't know how old she actually was and wouldn't be surprised if they orchestrated the whole thing. At the time, they were a new company without any name recognition, trying to put together a female pop group. At a time where it was kind of a new concept in Korea, they may have had a tough time attracting potential trainees and just decided to go with talent they had worked with previously. As I mentioned, Guy would have debuted with Baby Box in 97 if she hadn't gotten injured. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think she should have been removed from the group? And do you think she truly left the industry after this? I like to think that there's an alternative timeline where she got plastic surgery, changed her name again, and debuted with another girl group. There's a free fan fiction idea for you. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my previous Baby Vox video where I talked about the time they collabed with Tupac. Sort of. But don't forget to click that like button and subscribe so you don't miss my next video. I've been Lisa, your cursed K-pop historian, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay weird. No.